Hello and welcome again, Workspace Spark subscribers. We are here with Tammy Mifflin. I know if you recognize her face, she's been here before and we're so glad that she's here. Thank you so much for joining us, Tammy. Thank you for having me again. I appreciate it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so I'm going to read your bio. I know our subscribers have seen you already, seen your beautiful face, but I am going to let them know your background. So Tammy Mifflin, an MBA graduate of Northeastern University, is a founder of Lighted Lanterns um, Consulting, a woman-owned, minority-owned consulting firm specializing in career services, management consulting, and development training. She has a passion for simplifying processes, fostering progressive and positive outcomes, promoting the advancement of people, and cultivating potential. Her passion for excellence and helping others pre-day adolescence, where she earned the Golden Eagle Award, Medical Writing Academic Excellence Award, and a key to the city of Warner Robins. After graduating from Westland College with a BA in biology, she had various positions in the healthcare industry before transitioning into executive leadership. From a quality assurance chemist to medical device sales to operations management to leadership development trainer, she sustained her professional distinction in innovative strategies and performance optimization and received the Hero Award for Operational Excellence in 2015. With over 20 years of experience, Tammy started Lighted Lanterns in response to recurring experiences with people and business owners who had difficulty translating their potential or maximizing their success due to lack of knowledge or cost-effective resources. These encounters reminded her of her struggles to overcome cultural, political, and societal limitations to achieve her career goals. Everybody, let's welcome Tammy. All right, well, Tammy, thank you so much again for being here. I just read your professional bio, but if you could just tell everyone about yourself. Okay, well, um, you covered a lot of it, right? <laughs> Most of it is I'm a workaholic by day, right? <laughs> but at night, I do like to have a good time. I like to read, I like to write, I love musicals. So there's not a musical I don't think that I've, I haven't seen. <laughs> So um, for me, it's just about the culture. It's just about um, making sure, um, you know, I love good food. So restaurants, any new restaurant that people have, please let me know. I'm going to be there. Um, I'm a foodie connoisseur, I guess you can say. <laughs> But that's who I am as far as, you know, networking with people, getting to know people and just really looking at the overall experiences. Um, I also love to travel. So love to hear some of the stories about where people have been and any uh, potential places that I should visit in the next coming years. Awesome. Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, Expert advice, one thing we love to do for our subscribers is provide them practical and useful tips that can help advance their careers. So today's topic is best practices for setting career goals. So we're in the start of the new year, right? It's almost spring, like things are getting ready. People I feel like are renewed, they're out of those winter blues. They're like, oh my gosh, maybe it's time for me to change my career. Um, but oftentimes we got to do that by setting career goals. Why do you think it's important to set new goals each year? Well, the first reason is because our goals are constantly changing, right? So whenever we think about what we wanted to do last year, that can change from year to year. Sometimes it can even change from day to day, right? Um, I remember starting out as a, a child, you know, thinking, oh, I wanted to be a lawyer like Claire Huxtable, right? On the Cosby Show. <laughs> And then a lawyer came to our school one day, talked to us, and I was like, no, I cannot do that. And I ended up changing into medicine, and now I'm in business. So as you can see, things change, right? <laughs> That's the biggest thing. Um, the job market is consistently changing, right? So when we think about um, the prime example is before COVID, right? Um, we were in a conventional or more traditional conventional work setting where we would go into the office. Now there is a work from home paradigm. So that has shifted the way that we really do business and how we work, um, the type of environment that we're in. Our skills can change, right? Um, if you were not tech savvy before COVID, you had to learn how to get tech savvy because again, once you shifted to that work from home paradigm, you had to learn the computer, you had to learn, you know, those video chats and different platforms and, you know, how to answer calls and transfer calls remotely. So there's a lot going on that if you didn't know how to do before, um, like I said, the market, the skills, and just even your career goals are changing. It provides a real perspective. 
Okay. When you set goals, you're really writing out your plan of action of here's what I want to do. Here's how I want to get here. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, life is going to give us lemons, right? So we're going to, if we have a plan, we can make lemonade, right? If we don't have a plan, then we're going to either take a lot longer to get to our goals, or we're going to just, you know, kind of fall apart whenever those, those bad things happens or those lemons are kind of given thrown our way. Um, so we need that blueprint, right, in order to determine, streamline our focus, to keep us from having that squirrel syndrome or that shiny object syndrome, you know, where we get easily distracted by the next new thing that comes along. Um, and then also, too, it keeps us accountable by helping us know what pathway we want to be on, right? So if we have it written out, we can go back to it as a reference and say, okay, this is where I had said I needed to be. So now let me either re-strategize to get to that point, or if I've made that, great, check it off onto the next thing. Mm, yes, I totally agree. Uh, as we're shifting, I think sometimes people think about personal goals, but not really setting career goals and how, like you said, life gives us lemons and being able to shift. Um, you can shift confidently when you have a plan, right? Or it's easier to adjust the plan when you at least have one and not kind of winging it in your career. Now, if you're new to creating career goals, so we just talked about people who may have not been setting career goals. If you're new creating career goals, where do you start? The most important thing is to just start, right? You got to take that first step. A lot of people don't even do that. They have all these ideas in their mind and they're just like, you know, cycling through so many different things. But the first thing is to start. And then the next thing would be to write it down, right? Um, as you're going through, make sure you conduct a self-assessment right? You want to understand what are your best skills? What are your worst skills? What are your greatest qualities, right? What are your strengths and weaknesses is another way to put it. You also want to know what have you done in your current position to impact your company? Have you saved them time? Have you saved them money? Um, you know, what is it that you contributed to that company, right? And you also want to ask yourself, am I growing professionally or am I stagnant? You don't want to be in a position where you are not growing, right? You're not learning new skills and you're just kind of coming in, doing the same thing day in, day out, and you're not making any type of um, contribution to your overall professionalism, right? And your, your growth. You also want to consider um, how you feel about where you are now, right? You want to ask yourself, am I happy in my current position? If you're not, then that's something that you want to change, Am I making the money that I want to make? If I'm not making the money that I want to make or I can't pay my bills, I'm not going to be happy. <laughs> right? <laughs> Most people aren't, okay? Um, and what would, my, what would I need to do? Um, or what would give me career fulfillment, right? So what is it that, how much money do I need to make to be happy in my career? How much, you know, um, how many skills do I need to be really exercising my skills, right? Because a lot of times you have the skills, but when your job is not challenging you and preparing you to be even better than where you are, sometimes a lot of people don't like that. And mm -hmm. so it becomes a little bit, again, more stagnant and mundane and boring for them. And they're looking for the next big challenge. Mm -hmm. um, you want to brainstorm your career options, right? You want to know what aligns with your skills and what can support you financially. So that's when you start thinking about, okay, here's my skills. Here's my experiences. What can I do with these things? Because it could be totally different than where you are right now. Um, again, goes back to creating your roadmap. You want to create that roadmap for reaching your goals because you want to make your goals actionable, measurable, and also realistic. Okay. Mm -hmm. You want to think about what you can do to achieve your goals. So that's the actionable part. The measurable, of course, is finding a metric to say, okay, if I do this, you know, checking off the list, can I measure this in some way? And then realistic is keeping it simple. The idea is to be able to achieve the goals that you set. So you don't want to set something that's going to take you 10 years to accomplish, right? Because you don't have the skill. So start out small and then take those little steps to get to where you need to be. And even though your 10-year plan might be something a little bit greater, you can start now to preparing for that. So where that when that time comes, you're able to easily and quickly move into your next. Mm, yes, I think that's so great. Self-assessment, especially, I never even thought about doing that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, definitely, as I entered back into the workplace, uh, I definitely think that's important for you to, even before you start looking for a job or creating career goals, that you do some self-assessment. Where are you? Where are you weak? Where are you? Where do you have strengths? I think that's super important. 
Right. And the important thing too, is to remember that you don't have to change jobs to um, meet your career goals. You might actually be in the same position right now, and it might be within your same company that you want to move up or something that you want to do just to feel more confident in your job. So a career change or career goals doesn't mean that I need to redo everything in my career. It just simply could mean just a position change where you are, or even just a a new skill set that you're learning in order to make your job a little bit more interesting. What a great point, right? Because if we talk about not being satisfied in career, the first thing people think about is leaving the job. And maybe leaving the job is not the answer. Maybe it's re, um, invigorating how, why you started there, um, finding a new skill. I think that's great advice. Right. Now, um, what is a great way to evaluate your last year's goals? So we talked a little bit about self-assessment, but is there anything else to add that someone, if they had goals from last year, can kind of reevaluate? Well, outside of doing the self-assessment, you want to make sure, you know, ask yourself, did I reach my goal, right? Um, That's the first thing, yes or no, kind of like that checkbox. Um, You also want uh, want to understand why you didn't reach your goal if you fell short of it, okay? Mm -hmm. That is just as important as making it measurable, right? The reason being is that whenever you don't reach the goal, a lot of people just say, oh, I didn't reach it on to the next goal. There might be a reason. You need to know that underlying reason because if you set another goal, you might establish a repeat pattern of something. Maybe that goal was too hard for you and you pushed it to the side and said, I'm not going to deal with that today. <laughs> as opposed to, you know, actually focusing on it. And then as you kind of year after year, or if you do it, you know, every quarter or however you're measuring yourself, you might realize that, oh, I'm pushing off the harder stuff because I'm getting, you know, I'm getting the easier things out of the way. And that may not be challenging you the way you need it to be. So you definitely want to take the time to um, assess your why in that situation. Um, And then to reactivate your goal, if you didn't meet the goal and you feel that it is still relevant to your career path, slide it right back into your current goals and say, okay, I missed this last year. How can I incorporate this into this year? Or maybe I make this a priority this year and then work on my new goals kind of after that. So, you know, you just want to make sure you really do that assessment, but make sure you don't leave out any part of it. So you're not you know, leaving something on the table that could really be a key success to your, um, or a key achievement to your success. Awesome. Um, now, again, new year, uh, new season. What are some career trends you see in this year? So the biggest one is we kind of touched on a little bit earlier, which was the work from home paradigm. Right. That is not going away. <laughs> Right. No time soon. Um, One is because companies felt that it's more productive. And in some instances, um, it's cheaper, you know, more cost effective for them. They don't have to pay for a building, you know. Um, So there's a lot of things that go into that, um, Mm -hmm. that I feel that that trend is going to continue. Um, the hybrid opportunities is another trend that I feel is going to uh, give ah, continue to give candidates. more work environment options, right? Mm -hmm. Before we only had the option of nine to five, you know, basically time wise, like what we're gonna do. We really didn't have the option for work from home, work in the office or create like a hybrid situation. So that is a career trend that I do feel that's gonna continue into um, 2022 or throughout 2022. There also is a surge in self-employment, right? So there are people that were in corporate America and said, you know what, when the pandemic hit and I'm working from home or either I'm out of a job, I need to find a way to make income. So that spawned a lot of new entrepreneurs on the scene. And that's something that people now are like, you know what, I want to work for myself. I don't want to work for someone else. I want to make, you know, make myself successful. If I'm making a company, you know, billions of dollars, millions of dollars, whatever the case may be, then why can't I invest in my success, myself and my success and do the same for me, right? So that's going to continue into 2022. There is a high demand for workplace flexibility, meaning that your normal nine to five is not appealing to people anymore. So people are looking for options like, do you have childcare? Can I change my hours? Do you have flexible hours? Um, Is it work from home? Is it hybrid on site? You know, different things like that. So now we have more opportunity to negotiate and leverage what we want to see in our career that is going to make us happy. 
you know, uh, whereas before we didn't have too much of choices with the companies that we were applying for. Um, the power dynamic has definitely shifted because of that. So for instance, it's in favor of the job seekers as a result of the great resignation. Okay, so in 2021, we know a lot of people were um, resigning, and you know, even though we had the COVID and layoffs and things like that, a lot of people were also resigning because they felt like they were not being valued or appreciated. Okay, so that's what led to the great resignation, and that opened up more positions for candidates. So now, as I'm coming in, I have more of an ability to negotiate a salary because you need people. And if I'm qualified, I have the experience, then I'm going to try to shoot for a higher rate probably for most of the jobs. So a lot of companies had to up their hourly wages or even their salary rate, you know, salaries in order to accommodate that great resignation because they knew, hey, I need people. We saw that with like the fast food chains, like that increase from, you know, a couple dollars an hour to like 15 or 17, 18 on up why they needed people and they knew that they were going to have to pay for it and if they wanted to get any type of good uh good talent in in place um there's also more of a cultural alignment that we're seeing so with the cultural alignment company candidates are looking for companies that resemble what makes that really the values and beliefs that they have so you know no longer is it i just need a paycheck people are really looking at do you have the culture do you have diversity? What are you doing for me? Um, in order to decide if they want to come on board with any of those companies and work for them. So again, that shift kind of all started from, you know, like I said, from COVID, but transition has burned a lot of different things. And also automation. Automation is going to be key because like I said, with the work from home, there's a lot more automation that's happening, um, you know, with that as well, too. So we just want to make sure that's going to be a trend that's going to continue because we want to make the process easier um, for people, for managers, so they can free up their time in order to kind of focus on the people and the talent that they do have in place. And the last thing I would say that's going to be a trend is the gig economy or expansion of the gig economy. Um, back in the day, I'm going to kind of date myself here, but back in the day, <laughs> we had, um, it was it was custom to work a job we were looking for people that worked five, 10 years, 15 years, right? That's not the case anymore. The gig economy is where people are actually doing like working a job, getting the skills that they need, and then they're on to the next thing. Or it could be they're working, getting the pay that they need for the interim, and then they're net looking for the next big bucks, right? So those are the things that we're kind of seeing with that gig economy. So as hiring managers, you have to adapt to, okay, I no longer might can find somebody that's been in a position for even two years, you know, so really I'm just looking for that experience as opposed to longevity. Right. I mean, wow. So many trends yeah. in such a short, I mean, I know it feels like we've been in this time frame for a long time, but if we really think about it, that is such a short amount of time mm -hmm. to transition from hybrid to gigs, to entrepreneurs, to the power shift. Yeah. I can only imagine how it is on the inside for employers. Mm -hmm. Right. I know that's kind of off subject, but I can only imagine how it is for HR departments and how they've had to manage because that is a major shift. You just listed off some important things that would take years to shift and not at the same time. Right. So um, just interesting in how people are able to shift. I am one of those people I got laid off and started freelancing um, my services. I've been freelancing for now two years. I am actually looking to go back to work. I, I believe I love being a hybrid entrepreneur, mm -hmm. um, but you're right. Going back to work looks different for me. I mean, I, I worked from home before um, any of this happened. So mm -hmm. I am of course looking for something to work from home, but just even how I see jobs are, they look so different than they did just two years ago online. Um, Thank you. Yeah, yeah, because I'm a hybrid entrepreneur as well. And so, like you said, um, in the healthcare field, it's a little bit different and we were able to sustain through that, but there's so many people around us that were in healthcare and different things, you know, that, that were laid off, that were impacted. And, but again, there's been some great businesses that have come out of that. So you kind of have to take the good with the bad on that. Um, but people are doing really well when they decided, you know, to stick with their guns and really just kind of say, okay, I'm about to do this and I'm going to do it for myself, to, for myself and let's get this going. Yes. And then nothing's going wrong with going back to work. Right. And I right. think 
things, some things are temporary depending on where you are in your life. If you had children at home that were virtual and all of those things. Right. If you do create career goals, what career goals, what do you, what actions do you think you need to achieve them? Like what actions or tools are available for you to achieve those goals? Okay. I think um, the first thing you have to do is, um, as we talked about before, define what you want in your career, Mm -hmm. right? Every person has a career goal that looks different from the next person. And then also too, as we talked about earlier, it can change from day to day, month to month, year to year, right? Um, You need to be specific about what you want, Mm -hmm. right? Don't leave it to chance and say, oh, well, I can accept this or I can, you know, do this. If that's not what you want, don't accept it. Don't, don't take it, right? Be specific about, okay, yes, this is what I want in a job. Yes, this is what I want in a career. Um, Can you create a sliding scale? Absolutely. You can say, this is what I'm going for, but this is really what I'm willing to accept, right? So you can do that, um, you know, just not saying you can't do that, but you can. Um, But again, just try to be as specific as possible with your goals. The next thing is to choose one to three big goals and then break them down into smaller ones right? Um, Have a plan of action. You know, if it's, I'm going to start a new job and I'll use your example, project management, right? (laughs) Um, If I'm going to start a new job in project management, what do I need to do? You know, if I'm not familiar with Asana or Monday or some of the common, you know, project management software, is that something that I need to um, find a free class to take and, and, you know, really just learn it. So then I can put that on my resume when I'm applying for jobs. So things like that. Um, find mentors and like-minded people that will keep you accountable, right? Mm, Um, like-minded is key. Mentors is key (laughs) because not everyone is going to have that same drive and same passion that you have for where you want to be in life. And if they don't, unfortunately, they're going to be, um, what we call a border bully, um, as opposed to um, someone that is benefiting you. And border bully comes from a book, one of the books that I actually like reading called The Dream Giver. And so those are the people that really try to hold you back from walking into your purpose and walking into your neck. So that's why I say like-minded people. Um, You also want to take small steps daily right? Don't just make this broad goal and then say, oh, I'll check on it once a month. You know, keep it on your daily focus. Post it on your refrigerator, right? If you have to. Um, Do things that make it visible so you understand this is my goal and this is what I'm working for. Because doing that is also an encouragement, right? Um, When you see that, it reminds you, I need to be here. I need to get going again when you feel like you've fallen off track. So that's something that could be that little bit of small motivator to get you going. You also want to track your progress, as we've talked about, and you want to celebrate your achievements and visualize your success. That's part of the note cards or, you know, posting things on the refrigerator, Um, even if it's just a picture of where you want to be. That helps you think about that, visualize it, and then really just achieve it. And overall, be patient, right? It's not going to happen overnight. Some people, you know, that Instagram success has everyone thinking that they can be an overnight celebrity, right? (laughs) That's not true. It's a lie. (laughs) Um, Anything worth having is going to take time. So just really, you know, pace yourself, make sure you stay motivated, have your accountability team, and it will come, you know, to fruition. You just got to put in that work. Mm, yes, yes. I think, again, social media, but also the invisible pressure of having to figure it out all at once, right? Mm-hmm. And that's super important. Great tips. Now, you're ready to leave your job. Like you've done the self-assessment, you've looked at your career goals, you realize the space is just not for me. Yeah. What can you do to get started on your new job search journey? So get connected if you're not already. Yep. Social media has its pros and cons, but when it comes to job search, it is a huge pro, right? So you need to tap into that network, start sending out messages in mails. If it's on LinkedIn, you know, to people and say, Hey, you know, I I might be interested in a job with your company or people love money in their pocket. So um, ask about those referral bonuses. Hey, I'm getting ready to apply for a job with your company. Um, Is it okay if I list you as a referral bonus? And if I get hired, you know, you get that money. Like a lot of companies are doing that. Good idea. um, (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, that's a little power play, but you know, and it's not money coming out of your pocket. So, hey, that's a great resource right there. Um, <clears throat> let people know you're looking for opportunities, right? So outside of networking and kind of just saying, hey, I'm interviewing or I'm, you know, kind of trying to get on with your company. Um, there is a way in LinkedIn to show that or doesn't show to your people that you work with that you're open to opportunities, right? And so you can go in there and you can uh, put that in there so people, recruiters, hiring managers know, and you can update it, right? Make sure all of your stuff is updated so that way when you put that on there and recruiters or hiring managers see that, then they're more willing to contact you. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, another thing is consider what type of position will bring you joy. Um, from the culture to the pay to the experiences, you know, don't apply for anything just to get a paycheck. I can't tell you how many people do that. And when you ask them, you know, what's their plan or um, their five-year plan, or even, you know, why are they interested in the position? They really don't have a good reason, right? <laughs> so so um, it's like, make sure this job is going to benefit you. Don't just accept a paycheck. Cause when you do that, I can guarantee you, you are not going to be happy, right? You're going to be in and out of there within a couple of months, or if not sooner, if you can get out of there, right? <clears throat> and also make sure you dust off your resume and update it. A lot of people just have one standard resume and they send that one to every single job, even though it may be different, slightly different. You want to make sure that you're customizing your resume and your cover letter, you know, to each position that you're applying for. There is um, a thing called ATS or applicant tracking system that looks for keywords in the job description. So if you have a resume that is a standard resume that you've gotten and you've applied, used that to apply for every single job you've ever applied for, you probably ended up in file 13 or the trash bin, <laughs> right? Because you didn't make it past the applicant tracking system. So make sure that you understand that you're going to have to customize each resume that you submit according to the job that you're applying for. And you also want to look at your financial situation, right? If you are getting ready to leave your job or feel like you want to leave your job, um, do you have two to seven months worth of income to supply your daily living expenses? Because a lot of people don't understand. They think that, oh, I can get a job in two months, you know, or even less. But a lot of jobs, uh, the job search process can take anywhere from two to seven months. So if you've left your job thinking, OK, I hope to have something in a week or two, you're going to start feeling a pinch. You're going to start struggling for that. So check your reserves. If you're going to do, if you are going to leave your job, prepare in advance if you can financially. Um, if not, then consider working and taking time, like just say, hey, after I get off work, I'm going to have to spend two hours, you know, an hour to two hours applying for jobs, researching, doing what I need to do in order to be able to leave my job. So that way you don't have to be in a financial pinch. Mm, yes, I didn't think about that, like about the job assuming that you'll get a job in a month and mm -hmm. it could take up to seven. Yeah. Um, well, this has been great. Can you leave us with any career books do you recommend? I know you mentioned the book earlier, but mm -hmm. any career books that you recommend to help set goals or help you with a career go growth this year? Well, one of the books that I um, like is by Michael Hyatt and it's called Your Best Year Ever. And one of the reasons why I liked it is because it gives some really great tips, but not just about setting career goals, but just goals for your life in general, right? And it mentions kind of what I touched on earlier, that everything requ important requires work. And sometimes there's a long arc between the dream and its realization, okay? So that's why you really have to set yourself up to be patient when it comes to um, looking for a job or anything dealing with your career, because again, it's not going to happen. <clears throat> Excuse me, <laughs> my allergies overnight. <laughs> um, and one of the things too, is that I, he talked about um, this thing called sense of urgency, right? And how it's opposite to entitlement. For me, the entitlement part is this belongs to me. I deserve this, you know, and I want it now. That's the urgency part of it, right? But just because we have a plan in place and we set a goal and we want it to happen as quickly as possible doesn't mean that it's going to, right? So we have to find that balance in between and be okay with that because sometimes that can be discouraging and that it may take five years for you to get to a particular career goal. And that's, you may have wanted to do it in two. So Again, you have to continue to be patient, but also motivate yourself and understand that it is a process. Yes, it's all a process, right? I just think that 
if any, if we didn't learn anything in these last few years it is to slow down the pace mm -hmm. and understand that all of this is a process. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Tammy. Was there any parting words, anything you'd like to say before we get out of here? <laughs> um, for anyone, like I said, that's looking for um, just career advice or looking for um, an updated resume, a LinkedIn optimization, so that way you can maximize your chances of getting noticed for that new career or even new job that you're wanting, um, please visit our website at lightedlanterns.com and connect with one of our consultants who can definitely um, help you along that pathway and get you in the right direction so you can start off 2022 or continue into 2022 with landing the dream job that you want and being happier. Awesome. Well, we'll make sure that our subscribers have your website located below and how to follow you on social media. Again, thank you so much, Tammy. We look forward to having you again. Listen, we may have you again. You're so insightful um, and our, our subscribers love you. So again, thank you so much, Tammy. And we'll see you all again next time. All right. Have a good one. Thank you. You're welcome.